Hey guys, it's your freaking favorite medical channel, Medicosis Perfectionalis. Continuing our bleeding and coagulation playlist, today we'll talk about heparin, baby, so let's get started. But before we get started, let me tell you about Jay McLean, the dude who discovered heparin in 1914, and he was only a second year medical student, yet he's the one who discovered heparin. Now you're almost about to finish medical school, what have you done with your life? Besides enlightening us using your woke Twitter feed. Oh, I was just trying to shut up. He was able to extract heparin from the liver of a dog. And that's why it's called heparin. Hepa means liver. I-N most of the time means protein. But not here. Here it's a glycosaminoglycan, which is a polysaccharide, a carbohydrate, mind you. So let's organize our butt. Coagulation, you start with vasoconstriction, then primary hemostasis, you can thank your platelets, secondary hemostasis, say thank you to the coagulation factors, and then fibrinolysis, thank you TPA, who converted plasminogen into plasmin, and then plasmin destroyed the fibrin fiber. How can we assess primary hemostasis? Using platelet count, bleeding time, and platelet aggregometry. How about secondary hemostasis? PT, PTT, and TT. Fibrinolysis using fibrin degradation products and D-dimer. Give me some drugs because I'm thrombosing. I'm having DVT or PE or stroke or myocardial infarction, unstable angina, etc. I'm a high-risk patient with increased risk of hypercoagulability. Please help me. We have options. We have antiplatelets, anticoagulants, and fibrinolytics. When it comes to antiplatelets, you have four options. Cyclooxygenase inhibitors such as aspirin and nonsteroidals. P2Y12 inhibitors such as clopidogrel, prasugrel, ticlopidine, ticagrelor, GP2B3A inhibitors, apsiximab, terofiban, eptifabetide, phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitors such as dipyridamol and silostazole. We have talked about all of these before. Anticoagulants, we have four options. Heparins, with an S. Warfarin, only one, no S. Direct factor 2a inhibitors or direct thrombin inhibitors such as the famous ergotroban troban i ban thrombin thrombin inhibitor and factor 10a inhibitors why did you say heparins as a plural because it includes three things the unfractionated heparin the good old one the low molecular weight heparin and the fondaparinox who named these things when it comes to fibrinolytics also known as thrombolytics, also known as clot busters, you have TPA, streptokinase, alteplase, nectoplase, ritoplase, etc. If I have too much fibrinolysis, I can give you anti-fibrinolysis. So this is not a coagulation problem, that's a bleeding problem. You give tranexamic acid and epsilon aminocaproic acid. When the patient tells you, hey doctor, I'm taking a blood thinner, a blood thinner is not a very sophisticated term. It could mean literally anyone. You should go fishing and ask for more details. What do you mean by a blood thinner? Oh, I'm taking aspirin. This is very different from, I'm taking warfarin, very different from, oh, they give me just streptokinase because I just had a freaking uh, massive pulmonary embolism. As you know, heparin is a naturally occurring substance. It's already in your body before taking any drugs. In my previous video, I have talked about the difference between heparin and warfarin. Please watch that video before this one. Okay, how does heparin work? It stimulates the antithrombin 3 and then the antithrombin 3 will actually do the heavy lifting by inactivating factors 9 10 11 12 if you want to be super sophisticated at 2 and 7 so 2 7 9 10 11 12 we give credit to whom credit is due heparin takes all credit for what antithrombin 3 is the actual hero please don't say heparin say heparins because heparins is a group of drugs including the unfractionated gold old heparin or ufh low molecular weight heparin or LMWH, synthetic heparinoid. So there is a difference between heparins and heparin. By the same token, there was a difference between tetracyclines and tetracycline. Tetracyclines is a class of medications, not just one medication. Tetracyclines include tetracycline, menocycline, doxycycline give me examples the unfractionated heparin is just called heparin low molecular weight heparin we have enoxaparin and deltaparin you, you see this parin in it yeah because it's a heparin the synthetic heparinoid is the crazy fondaparinox i'm so fond of you you know why because you are safe for patients who have hit heparin induced thrombocytopenia 
The differences between heparin and warfarin couldn't have been more stark and they were discussed in the previous video. In a nutshell, heparin, in vivo and vitro, it came from basophils and mast cells. The mechanism of action, heparin stimulates antithrombin 3 which will inactivate factors 9, 10, 11, 12, add 2 and 7. Side of action in the blood, the answer is very rapid, duration short, the half-life is about 2 hours I believe. The route of administration It's always an injection, there is no such thing as oral heparin Oh, my doctor gave me oral heparin, shut up Does not exist How do you monitor the unfractionated heparin using PTT? You only use this for the unfractionated heparin It does not work for the low molecular weight heparin The antidote is the protamine sulfate Very important for your exam Does it cross the placenta? No, therefore it's the drug of choice for pregnant mothers Heparin is not teratogenic because it does not cross the placenta. The mnemonic is heparin leaves the baby happy. Contrast that with warfarin which declares war on the baby. It's teratogenic. So here is the deal. This is the difference between the unfractionated heparin, the dark blue line, and the low molecular weight heparin, the light blue or indigo line. The unfractionated heparin stimulates the antithrombin 3 to inhibit factors 9, 10, 11, 12, and factor 2, specifically thrombin, and factor 10. However, low molecular weight heparin stimulates the antithrombin 3 to inhibit only factor 10A. So let me ask you this, with regards to the unfractionated heparin, 2, 7, 9, and 10, thrombin, and factor 10, do you think it will prolong the PTT? Oh yeah, it inhibited, it destroyed the intrinsic pathway. Of course the PTT will be prolonged. Great, let me ask you this, the low molecular weight heparin, do you think it will prolong the PTT? Oh, it just inhibits factor 10, which is in the common pathway, not in the intrinsic pathway. The intrinsic pathway was spared, therefore it's not going to affect the PTT. Bingo. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Heparins. Heparins, because there is the unfractionated, the low molecular weight, and the synthetic heparinoid. Mechanism of action, clinical uses, and side effects. Mechanisms of action. Heparin will stimulate antithrombin 3 to inhibit factors 9, 10, 11, 12. Add thrombin and add factor 7. This will lead to inhibition of secondary hemostasis. Why would you use heparin? What are the clinical uses or indications? Hypercoagulability when the patient is clotting, especially in an emergency situation in the ICU. Because heparin is so fast. If I see a patient in the emergency department, okay, with DVT and there is a risk of pulmonary embolism two minutes from now and I saw you giving warfarin and no heparin, I'll smack your butt, metaphorically speaking. Warfarin is so slow, it has to go to the liver, knock on the door in the liver, hey liver, would you please inhibit your gamma carboxylation a little bit? Oh yeah, maybe in the next cycle. By the time this happens, the patient is toast. However, heparins within seconds will stimulate the antithrombin 3, within seconds will inhibit factors 9, 10, 11, 12, 2 and 7, which will lead to inhibition of secondary hemostasis, inhibition of the coagulation casket, inhibition of the formation of fibrin fibers. Okay, if a drug is used to prevent coagulation, what do you think the side effects are? Um, bleeding? No, duh. Let's get more sophisticated. Heparins, mechanism of action. They stimulate antithrombin 3 to inhibit factors 9, 10, 11, 12, add 2 and 7, which will inhibit secondary hemostasis. In other words, heparin is a freaking anticoagulant. Indications, hypercoagulability, ICU anticoagulation for the emergency and the urgent stuff, such as angina, myocardial infarction and DVT, test tubes and kidney dialysis. And here's a question for you. When it comes to the test tube, which color or which top of the test tube contained heparin? Was it the purple top, the green top, or the blue top? Let me know the answer in the comment section. Side effects include bleeding, heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, which is the topic of the next video, and osteoporosis. Contraindication, do not give heparin if the patient is allergic or has hypersensitivity against heparin. And the antidote, if you gave too much heparin, is protamine sulfate.
Only one discount left for one student only. Get a 25% discount towards my antibiotics course. Use the promo code antibiotics25 at metagosisperfectionalist.com. Heparins are divided into three subtypes, unfractionated heparin, low molecular weight heparin, and synthetic heparinoid. Unfractionated heparin is just called heparin. Low molecular weight, this include enoxaparin and deltaparin. How about synthetic heparinoid? Fondoparinox. I'm so fond of the fondoparinox because it's so good if the patient has a risk of HIT. Tell me more about the unfractionated heparin metabolized in the liver. Therefore what? If the patient has liver failure, do not give them unfractionated heparin, doofus. Oh, okay. Increased risk of HIT, heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. We'll talk about that in the next video. And there is increased antagonism by protamine sulfate. In other words, protamine sulfate is an excellent, excellent antidote for the unfractionated heparin. Not so much for the low molecular weight as we'll discover soon. How do we monitor the unfractionated heparin? Since it simulates the anti-thrombin 3 to inhibit factors 9, 10, 11, 12, and then 2 and 7, the intrinsic pathway is gone. You can monitor and use it PTT. Do not use PTT for the low molecular weight heparin because it did not touch the intrinsic pathway. Wake up! Okay, cool. Tell me about the low molecular weight heparin, enoxaparin and deltaparin, and they are excreted through the kidney. Therefore, what? If the patient has kidney failure, or a low creatinine clearance, or low GFR, or high creatinine in the blood, all of these mean just kidney failure, do not give low molecular weight heparin. Also, do not give fondoparinox for the same reason, excreted in the kidney. So if the patient has kidney failure and I have to use heparin, what should I do? Go with the unfractionated heparin because it's liver, not kidney. With the low molecular weight heparin, there is low risk of HIT, lower than unfractionated heparin, but the risk is not zero. However, the best thing for a patient with risk of HIT is fondoparinox if you have to use heparin. A lower risk of osteoporosis exists with the low molecular weight heparin, lower than the unfractionated. There is limited antagonism by protamine sulfate. How do we monitor the low molecular weight heparin? Don't say PTT, please, because you will look so stupid. You monitor the low molecular weight using anti-factor 10A for active assay because the sole purpose of the low molecular weight heparin was to inhibit factor 10 only not 9 10 11 12 7 and 2 shut up only 10. third synthetic heparinoid the fondoparinox i'm so fond of it why because it's selective anti-thrombin 3 inhibitor of factor 10a similar to the low molecular weight it just inhibits one factor 10 not 9 10 11 12 7. shut up only 10 and it's safer in hit so selective and safer this is the fondoparinox let's get creative with heparin using picmonic heparin here is the happy heron it has short half-life, half-life with shorts. It activates the anti-thrombin-3 and tie thrombone. This will lead to decreased thrombin and factor 10A. Decreased thrombin, the thrombone is down and factor 10A for active or apple. Side effects of heparin include bleeding, no kidding, and heparin-induced thrombocytopenia or hit. Here's the happy heron hitting the thrombone. Heparin induced thrombone side toe penia peanut the antidote is protamine sulfate depicted here by the potato man with sulfur matches pharmacology cannot get easier than this this beautiful slide was from picmonic.com slash vip hookup slash medicosis they have more than 1400 Picmonics, you will enjoy medicine. Question number 36 in our series. What's the drug of choice for a patient with DVT? A second year medical student discovered heparin for you. The least thing that you can do is to freaking study it. So please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to get my antibiotics course. Only one discount left. Thank you for watching as always. Be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense.